Sheldon Cooper might be AEW's biggest draw, but he was pushed all the way this week with the main event. AEW might rely on the Big Bang Theory, but this week they went out with a Big Bang for a change. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. And the AEW Dynamite quarter numbers are in, and they actually held pretty well this week. We never see this with Dynamite. Normally, they start off as strong as they possibly can, and then they lose, lose, lose. And by the end of the show, I mean, the gap between quarter one and the final quarter can sometimes be, you know, maybe three, four hundred thousand. We've seen it sometimes more than that down. This week, though, massive improvements. And the difference between quarter one and the final overrun was only 11,000. So I think we need to applaud AEW this week with a rating because, like I said previously, normally the, the drop-off on Dynamite is, is massive. It's, it's the biggest drop-off of any wrestling show. But this week, they managed to maintain pretty well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, same with Collision. Recently did those quarters, and Collision, I believe, from their highest to their lowest quarter, it was only a 57k difference. 557. Yeah, but Collision never really drops off, eh? W's Dynamite's a show known for dropping off. Yeah, but that's just consistency then across two shows. Compared to Raw, I think fucking Raw's the worst. But, yo, know, bad as Dynamite is, if you took away the Big Bang Fairy lead-in, I don't think it would be that, but I don't understand what Raw's excuse is for Dar. There's the excuse right there. Anyway, I, I don't really, I don't I don't agree with four hour excuses, but let's look at this two-hour show. So, opening quarter, 8 o'clock, 8.15, Will Ospreay, we have backstage angle, and then MGF, Will Ospreay, live promo. We then got the Elite and Christopher Daniels backstage, kicked off with its highest viewership, 864,000. Also, its highest key demo, 388,000. So, the numbers, strongest at the beginning. Obviously, we expect that. But it's it's how they held on, I thought that was impressive. But there you go, 864, highest quarter of the show. We move into quarter two, and this was the biggest decline of the show. 8.15 to 8.30, we go from the opening quarter to the second quarter. Chris Jericho versus Minoru Suzuki. And this went down, yes, down 11% to 768,000. 96,000 lost in viewership. And in the key demo, it also went down 14%. And it was by far the biggest loss in both viewership and key demo. Whether you judge it by the amount of views lost or whether you judge it by the percentage of views lost. No matter what way you look at it here, Chris Jericho was de certainly not the demo god in this quarter. Thanks, guys. I broke my finger, guys. Suzuki broke it, guys. As for the finger break, uh, I mean, at least he continued the match. We'll say that about him. Didn't do a Sin Cara. No, that was technically quarter three, but anyway, brother. Yeah, but Chris Jericho was a real wrestler, do you know what I mean? So. Nah, he's going to end it. He's going to finish it. Although he is a bit pathetic these days, so who knows if he'd quit yeah, the match, but... But this match was just too fucking old. Guys rolling about, man. <laughs> one who was once great, and one who I didn't know. One who was once great, and one who no, was never great. I would say for Suzuki this is his peak, because he's in a company in American time. What he didn't... Uh, Japan doesn't do fuck all for me. Yeah. Quarter three, 8.30 to 8.45pm, we had the continuation of Jujero Ko Suzuki... Post match with the learning tree, we then seen Shibata. We got Willow Nightingale, Chris Statlander, Stokely Havaway all backstage. We then got Brian Danielson and Jeff Jarrett in a backstage angle before the beginning of Shida versus Brett Baker. This went up one percent in the viewership to seven hundred and seventy eight thousand, and it went up two percent in the key demo. Moving into quarter four. 8.45, 9pm, continuation of Hikira Shida versus Britt Baker. We get the post-match with Mercedes Monet and Camille. And then we get the Patriarchy and a Kip Sabian backstage angle. And this went down another 4% to 
to 750,000. So we had Mercedes Monet in here. Didn't help the number. Didn't help the rating. I mean, if you had to give Mercedes Monet's AEW run so far a rating out of 10, I mean, what would you say? What would you say it is? The run's not impressed me. Um, the promos. Part for one with Brit Breaker, I thought was all right. I, I think for the most part, man, it's been very lackluster. Came in, the promos were just anti WWE, very lost virtue signalling in there. I think some of the stuff with Will Nightingale was all right. I mean, I'd probably give it like a five, five or a six out of ten. A lot of room to improve, but I'm not going to lie and say it's been atrocious and it's a one out of ten. I was going to go three, but here, you went six, so fair enough. I said five. Uh, five or six, actually. Anyway, quarter five. You think it's been that bad? Explain. I think I think the matches have been alright. I think everything else has fucking sucked. Fair I, I used to think I used to think Sasha Max was decent on the mic, but I don't know. Well, some of the promos have been alright. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. Uh, quarter five, nine o'clock to nine fifteen. We get Pack versus Boulder. Who the fuck is Boulder? Anyway, some guy for WCW. Swell Strickland, Darby Allen, the acclaimed Mark Briscoe, all backstage. We then got Mariah May taking on Caitlin Alexis. Uh, who the hell is that? I do not know. We get post match with Tony Storm, and then we get a Blood and Guts video. This went down another two percent to seven hundred and thirty-two thousand. Key demo again down two percent to three hundred fifteen thousand. But this was as low as the show would go. So it's up from here. We're heading, finally, in the right direction. Quarter six, 9.15 to 9.30 p.m. It is the beginning of the Elite versus Team AEW. This went up 4% in fuel ship to 758,000. And it went up 7% in key demo to 336,000. Quarter seven, 9.30 to 9.45 p.m. Again, continuation of the Elite versus Team AEW. Another big increase, 7% increase to up to 811,000. And the key demo up 10% to 368,000. So again, you know, we're getting two decent increases there for the main event. Quarter 8, a little bit surprising in my opinion. We see, now there was two ads, now maybe that's what led for the small decrease here. But it was 9.45 to 10 p.m. again. Continuation of the Elite versus Team AEW. Percent wise, it was down 1%. It went down to 801,000. And Key Demo went down to 2%. 359,000. And then move into the overrun. 10 o'clock to 6 minutes past 10. It was the finish of the Elite versus Team AEW. And it went up 6% in viewership to 853,000. Which is obviously only 9,000 of the opening quarter. Which did 864,000. So only, did I say 9? I 11. mean 11. 11. Yeah, I said that earlier. I don't know why I changed the 9. 11,000. So there you go. 11,000 off. And then the key demo went up 7%. 384,000, which was only 4,000 off the quarter 1 key demo. So the show finished strong. There's no doubt about it. Blood and Guts, it delivered. Because I couldn't tell you the last time I seen a Dynamite that had this strong... Of quarters in the final, in the final hour. It delivered last week. Our match kicked off the show. This week, an hour match, near enough fifty minutes, whatever. End at the show. Yeah, I tell you what. Is he going to stick with that? <laughs> it's hard Possibly. to do it though. It's hard to do that. You, you, ha you can't force that. Last week though, the hour, the match, the hour match drew at the beginning. I guess if it draws, then you may as well, you may as well try and implement it. But you can't really do it every week. That's the only thing. Look, I, I think it's I think it's an option that you can use. And I think the AEW fan base do enjoy these longer matches, these, you know, fucking extreme matches or whatever, you know, these rare matches that go the distance, that go long. But I think that's something that people would quickly get bored of. Yeah. And it might draw ratings if you don't do it that often. Like we've seen in WWE once upon a time, oh, let's do 90-minute matches, 70-minute matches, gauntlet matches. I think they work as a one-off. Like, this blood and guts work because it's like all your main offenders in one match. I think it worked more for me than MJF Will Osprey. For me, that match going that long is borderline fucking ridiculous. Like, whipping out oxygen tanks at the end of it. It wasn't even an Iron Man match. It was simply just one fault. If it, and it had a screwy finish as well. I think this worked better. But again, like you say, Dynamite, 
they need to incorporate segments. But you can't really do an hour long segment, can't well I think you can. Look at The Rock. The Rock was doing like 40 minute segments. That's The Rock. What's, well, what's going to happen next week? Tony Storm versus Mariah May, a 58 minute match or something? Maybe. So yeah, Tony Khan, back to back weeks, he's, he's done near hour long matches and they've, they've worked in the ratings. Can he continue to keep this up? Who knows? But it's definitely a step in the right direction. I'm sure Tony Khan's happy with this. But um, yeah, the, the big show now is obviously all in. Wembley. That's the one he needs to build towards. And he's given a lot of big shit away. So I wonder what the big match at Wembley's going to be. Uh, well... Consider with, with Team Elite, considering they've done this match here. I know Osprey and MJF are having a rematch. I don't think that'll mean a fent. But again, it's like, how many times can we get the Elite versus at Team AEW? With, like, no real stipulations. Like, there, there hasn't been any, really. Yeah, well, I think we've got away from the fact that... Are we getting a winner-takes-all sort of thing? They dropped the ball. They dropped the ball with the whole beatdown on Tony Khan. Yeah, it went nowhere. It went nowhere, unfortunately. I, mean, I think they realised, holy fuck, this guy can't act to save his life. You know, it looked like they were going to do something with it, though. Tony Khan sporting the neck brace. and yeah. But then, just... I think the last time we've seen Tony Khan was when he was crawling down... The ramp at that last pay-per-view before Jack Perry got set on fire. Yeah, and how embarrassing is that? They actually had something to work with, and then they've just thrown it underneath the carpet. For what reason? Is it Tony Khan realising, like, here, I, I love wrestling, I'm a sad mark, and I love taking these guys' moves, but it's not good for business. What's the real reason? What is the real reason? We don't know. Anyway, guys, that's it. There's your ratings there. Timmy, Timmy, Dobby, they're late. <laughs> Doesn't really do it for us, but I mean, it did it for, I guess, the AW fans. So I catch you in the next one. Till then, though. Peace.